it's not just our movie characters and our, our heroes, but it's like in, in everyone's dream the body has taken the central figure of the hero. And everything seems to be so important in relationship to the body and to time and space. So when we do spiritual practices, whether it's meditation or all different types of forgiveness, what you're actually doing is you're loosening your mind from those time-space coordinates. You're loosening your perception from that body identity. You're loosening your awareness from the particulars of time and space. And you're opening up to an, an expansive experience which many have called mystical experiences. Some have them through drug experiences. There are all different ways that people experience these expansive experiences. But what they do is they give you a glimpse that you are not what you think you are. You are so, so much more than what you have believed yourself to be. And those actions that we have in mind, of the ones that were good things and bad things, those who treated us right and those who treated us wrong, those memories we have, all those memories of the body, part of the serial adventure of the body, are all part of fragmented perception that the ego has made up to keep our mind feeling guilty. That the only way we can be free and know our divine innocence, our divine truth and love and light, is to completely be rinsed and washed free of all those memory fragments. Both the good and the bad. Everything that we've perceived as our self with regard to time and space is part of the veil that covers our awareness of our oneness. So for me, when I first started to get the sense of all this, I thought, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a, those are some big shoes. Forgive the universe. Mm. Whoa. Is, it, is there any other choice? Is there any other option there? You know, it's like. And I thought graduate school was tough. Ah. But actually, what it is, is, is as we go for that, as we open our mind to that, we become more and more intuitively guided. And I'd say the spiritual journey becomes fun. It doesn't seem fun to the ego when all those dark debris are coming up from the unconscious mind. It doesn't seem fun to the ego when you're doing your shadow work, when you're exposing the, the darkness and bringing it to the light, when you're raising your awareness up. It, it can seem extremely intense. It can seem very, very dark. And for many who have opened up to this path, they will, it's so daunting that they go, ah, I'm just going to be a human. I mean, it's just, it was better before I took the lid off. I had a pretty good life when the lid was still on. But when I pull the lid off, it's kind of like pop goes the weasel. I mean, it's the the shadow comes up. And Jesus does tell us that the more you look at fear, the less you will see of it. Meaning the more that you raise the fear to the light and you look open-eyed at your fears, they're fully brought up and you can look at them, the less you will see of it reflected in the world you will start to see more and more and more reflections of that love and light that you truly are. That's wonderful. That's important to know that there will be these reflections of light coming into your awareness because we need those. We need to know that we're making progress. We need to know that we're making a movement back to that light. We need, we need to be convinced and those reflections of love and light are amazing.